For a few years, I've seen the Peak Design travel tripods marketed heavily on social media. I've always wanted to give it a try, and luckily I finally had a chance on a recent photography trip. Hello everyone, I'm Will Cheney. If you're looking at buying a new tripod, upgrading an old one, or even looking at buying your first one, then this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to look at the key specs of the Peak Design carbon fiber travel tripod, what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it, and who I think it's for. Let's jump in. So the first key spec to know about this tripod is that it's priced at $599.95. The next thing to look at is the size of it. It's 15.4 inches whenever it's all folded up, and it's got a three and one eighth inch diameter. Additionally, once expanded, it, it can stand as tall as 60 inches or you can lay it down as flat as 5.5 inches. With this one being carbon fiber, it weighs in at 2.81 pounds. And as I just mentioned, this tripod is mainly carbon fiber being that the legs are made out of it and the rest of the components are made out of aluminum. A couple of other things to note on this one, uh, you do end up with a hook here that you can use for putting, um, hanging weight bags off of and then also inside of here, you also get a cool little mount for using your phone. Um, on top of that, you also have your typical standard ball head on here. Um, it's a little different than the standard ball head that you're probably used to, uh, but it does still swivel. Uh, you can get all the way into a portrait mode, stay in landscape, um, and you're able to tighten it. Um, and then on top of that, you also have a cool little feature here uh, for how you go ahead and mount your camera to it from the side. And then you just lock it in place using that lock. And then finally with this, you also get this cool little weatherproof case. Um, the tripod fits perfectly inside of it. And then you also have a cool spot in here to hold some of the extra accessories. So like if you don't want the mobile mount to be staying inside the tripod, you can stick it in here. Um, you can also, uh, the little tool that you get here, the little hex tool that hides in place on the tripod, you could also stick that in there if you wanted to. So coming up next, I'm gonna share with you what I liked about the tripod and then get into my dislikes. Um, and if you stick around till the end, we'll get into who I think this tripod's for. So stay tuned for that. And if you like the video so far, please be sure to click the like button and subscribe. And then down below in the comments, if you have any questions about the tripod, Go ahead and drop them there and I'd be happy to answer. So one of the first things that I really liked about this tripod was the weight coming in at 2.8 pounds. If I'm out backpacking um, or just doing some small hikes to go out and get photos or even traveling, getting on the airplane with some of the weight restrictions that airlines have, I like that the weight of this tripod is lower than some of the other, you know, the aluminum ones. Um, and that is because of the legs being made out of carbon fiber. And that leads right into another like that I have on this is just that it is carbon fiber legs um, and not aluminum, so it's helping with that weight. The next thing that I like about this tripod is this locking mechanism here. I thought it was an interesting design for how to unlock and lock the camera into place. And then you just do the flick of a thumb to slide your camera in there on the mount that you have mounted onto the camera that fits it. Um, never had any issues with that out in the field and I really liked it. Uh, it took me a little bit of time to get used to this for some reason. Um, I guess I'm used to the normal ball joint where you would sit here and turn a, uh, basically a large thumb screw. Uh, but this, you know, real easy to flick around and then you can just roll your camera into whatever position that you need it in. Uh, so I really enjoyed that and like that about the tripod. The next thing that I like about it is that little mobile mount. Um, I actually didn't even end up using it this go around. Um, however, it's something that for me, um, I keep finding more and more as I'm out in the field um, that I use my camera off of my phone more and more. Um, I mean, even the video as I'm recording right now, I'm filming that with, the, uh, with my iPhone 13 Pro. So um, a lot of good thing, there's a lot of good usage there for a phone, so it's nice that there's this cool little mobile mount just readily built in. Um, and that's really easy to just throw on there and then you can just store it right back in the uh, in the tripod and go on your way. And it's cool how it just kind of hides in there. Uh, one of the next things that I really liked about this tripod was the quick deploy. So you just pull all these legs out um, and I'll actually show you, you know, you go ahead and pull all of these just like this. And then you can literally just grab the bottom and just pull them all out just like that. Um, so pretty cool little feature there and then when you're all done for the day you just roll it back around. I mean these are a little tight but I actually found that I like them being tight the way that they are. Um, 
wasn't constantly dealing with these trying to loosen up and close up on me. So with this tripod, one other thing that I really liked about it was just the size. So rolls up to a really nice size for a travel tripod. I mean, I thought they did a really good job of trying to make use of all of the space once folded up versus, uh, you know, like a circular tube. You're gonna end up with a lot of uh, wasted space in between the legs. Um, and then going into like the, you know, 60 inches when you go in and extend it, um, you get that full extension, but you can also drop down to the five and a half inches. Um, and the way that you go about doing that is you just loosen this, turn it over to the side, pull out the little hex tool that Peak Design provides. Um, and then we're actually going to remove this. It takes just a second. Um, and probably for me, what I would end up doing if I bought this, I don't know that I would leave the extension on here. Um, on my current tripod, I have two different center columns. Um, and that's just my preference. I don't tend to shoot a lot from the 60 inch height, um, but I shoot more, a lot more where I'm trying to get down low so the center column gets in the way. So I like the ability to just drop that center column off. Um, like you can see here it's missing. And then now you can lower the legs fully flat and get down to that five and a half inch height. And I'll go ahead and throw this back together really quick. Uh, just so you can kind of see how this works. Sometimes the it gets a little it gets a little tricky getting used to uh, the way that the tripod can move around. Um, and I need to loosen this, and just like that, we'll tighten this back up, and we'll have the full center column available again. And just like that, we're back in business. Put the key back in there. All right, and then the last thing that I just would mention, um, I really like this little travel bag. I like that it's uh, weatherproof, and it's just nice for when you're getting on the plane. If you're putting it in your putting the tripod in your side pocket of your bag, this helps keep your tripod from getting scratched up. I mean, also I've noticed sometimes too that um, it's really easy to just whack somebody with the tripod that's off the side of your bag when you're walking down the aisle of the airplane. Uh, so that's just one little additional feature and like I kind of noted it's cool that they've got like little pockets in here for adding some of the tools and stuff if you don't want to carry them on the tripod at all times. I want to take a quick break to give a big shout out and thank you to my sponsor for this video, LensRentals.com. If you're in the market for new gear, I highly recommend using Lens Rentals to give that gear a try or to make sure the purchase that you're about to make is the right one. Or if you have a piece of equipment you only need to use once, Lens Rentals can get you the equipment to get the job done. Their customer service staff is right there to help you work through your rental needs, their website is streamlined from start to finish, and their packaging speaks for itself. If interested in renting, check the description below for a discount code, and now let's get back to the video. So with that, we'll jump into my dislikes. Um, first one really being, and seems to be always my first dislike on camera gear, is the price. Um, this one at $5.99, I, I mean, I really like the tripod. I think for myself, I'm gonna have a hard time justifying, you know, $599, basically $600 uh, for a travel tripod. Um, I do like that the weight's lower, but when you look at, they have an aluminum version of this, so the legs are actually all aluminum, and it comes in at $349.95. It's almost, it's basically $250 difference just to save um, I think it's 0.6 pounds. So the aluminum one comes in at 3.4 pounds. So it's just kind of like, is it really worth $250 to shave off 0.6 pounds? Um, and I guess that just comes down to the person. The next thing that I disliked, and you may have noticed it when I extended the legs a while ago, um, for me, it just feels like sometimes the carbon fiber sticks a little bit. Um, it's not just super smooth going in and out. I guess if you want it to, you could probably put just a little bit of grease or some oil on there. Um, that would be maybe one way to remedy that. But like you'll see here, like this one's really tight. Um, the other option you might have um, and that I haven't tried is you could also probably loosen that hex screw just a little bit. Um, but again, it might be better off that you have it tight um, so that your legs aren't just trying to extend whenever you don't want them to. And then the next thing that I would put as a dislike, um, I know that I've kind of talked about it, that this is kind of a cool feature, the way that you can just carry the tool with you. 
Um, my only concern is I have seen videos that other people have done about this where they've actually been like out hiking and didn't realize that the hex key had actually fallen out. Um, it does lock into place so you can actually kind of hear it click in. Um, but you know, to me, maybe I'd rather just keep it in the bag. I think if I just had that center column removed like I talked about um, earlier, I probably wouldn't have any use for the hex key with me out in the field. Um, although it would be nice like if the legs, like these are super stiff right now. Um, if they started getting loose that I could tighten them back up in the field. So do see some advantage there, but um, it's just kind of a matter of preference. And for me, I'd be more worried about losing that hex key than I would be probably actually putting it to use. Um, and then my final dislike on it, um, although I do like the ability that you can swap this center column out, um, I do think it's a little cumbersome that you have to use a tool to do it. Uh, like I kind of mentioned on my Manfrotto one, I just have two separate center columns. Um, they were super awesome from Manfrotto and I was able to actually go custom order one to the height that I wanted. So I just had the two center columns. Um, like I said, most of the time the long one, um, I just leave it home to be honest. I don't think I've used it in like the last two and a half years. So um, for me, the, the small center column tends to be better anyway, so I might would just leave this undone. Only problem is if I leave that undone, then I'd lose the ability to have the mobile mount carried within the tripod. So uh, just something to think about there. And at that point, that's it for the dislikes for me overall. Just a great tripod still. The last thing at this point that I want to jump in and talk about is just who I think it's for. Um, I think it's really built well for uh, People that are traveling a lot, like I mentioned, backpacking, airplane travel, um, some of the airlines, you know, not in the US, we don't seem to have too many restrictions on uh, weight for a carry-on bag, but when you start getting on some of the domestic travelers, I have seen limitations that are pretty light, um, like 18 pounds on uh, one of the Japanese airlines that I've flown on. So. Um, even though you probably aren't gonna get caught with those weights um, going over it, uh, it still does help to have that lighter bag. And then when you're walking around all day with a backpack on, um, that half a pound lighter on this versus say the aluminum version, um, I'm sure it does wear on you with fatigue um, having that heavier one. So uh, anybody traveling, I think this tripod's great for. Um, I would also recommend it for professionals that just want a good sturdy tripod without jumping up more towards the $1,000 range. Um, I still, I'll be honest, haven't tried a $1,000 tripod out yet, but um, this one here at the midpoint between the lower end ones and the high end being around five or $600, I think it'd be a good um, compromise for a professional and I think there's probably many professionals out there using it and many hobbyists as well. And then the last thing I would just say, you know, if you have that extra $250 and you really want a carbon fiber tripod, um, I do think this is a great option and a great um, step up from that aluminum one that Peak Design makes and even some of the other aluminum ones that other manufacturers make. So really just if you have that extra money, I think it's a decent tripod for you if you can fit it in your budget. So going through my final thoughts on it, um, I really like the size of it. Um, I like the dimensions that it folds down into and kind of how I mentioned about they make use of all the space that's available. Um, I also really like the weight. Again, traveling knocks off that 0.6 pounds from the aluminum version. I also found you know, that I liked the, these little snaps versus the twist locks. Uh, to me, just those twist locks get annoying sometimes. Um, so that was a cool feature that's in this one. And then kind of those last final thoughts on this, um, I wish I could do a little bit more without the tool, like I mentioned with the center column, and then really just, you know, take a look at that price and does it fit your budget? So at this point, if you're thinking about purchasing or renting, I'd really appreciate if you checked out the affiliate links that I have down in the description below. Uh, and don't forget about using lensrentals.com if you're um, really wanting to try this tripod out and give it a go before you drop $600 on it. And before you leave, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel while you're here. And if you're interested in other gear for using with a tripod for either nightscapes or astrophotography, you'll wanna check out my video comparing the Nikon 14 to 24 millimeter F2.8 versus the Nikon 20 millimeter F1.8 lens. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next time.